Hello and welcome to this video, which is the first one in the Paper 2 playlist. We're going to talk about algorithms today, a really, I mean, arguably the most important concept in computer science. And it's often a two marker um, definition question in Paper 2. So what is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of instructions that performs a specific task when followed. And you can have a couple of variations of this definition, but the two bits underlined are the two critical bits. Set of steps is fine. Saying it solves a problem is fine, but that's the essence, right? We are trying to solve problems using instructions. And these exist everywhere, both in real life and of course in computer science. I'll give you some real life examples. A recipe is a classic example because even someone as incompetent as me can make these semi-edible muffins by following a recipe, which is a set of steps. You might be studying maths and be taught a particular method to solve a problem by your maths teacher. The numbers might be different each time you get a question, but if you follow the same steps, you'll be able to hopefully solve the problem. And we've got loads in computer science because computers are really good at following instructions, but we need to tell it what the instructions are so that it can solve different tasks. And to give you one example, we often hear about the YouTube algorithm or TikTok algorithm, which recommends you videos. Well, that's very complicated, but it's using past data, it's using similar users to make predictions based on what you want. It is ultimately a set of instructions running on a computer. Now we have to be careful about tying up the concept of a computer program and an algorithm too closely because they are just an idea. That's what an algorithm is. It's an idea for how to solve a problem. And because of this, there are loads of ways to represent algorithms, right? One of them is just me telling you. I could just tell you what to do to make a cupcake. Or I could put it in a bullet point list. Or I could put it in a table. There are different ways to represent it. The ways most relevant in paper two are pseudocode, flowcharts, OCR exam reference language, and program code. And we'll look at each of these representations in turn. A computer program itself is just an implementation of an algorithm. So someone has an idea for how to factorize a quadratic equation. I then put it into a program to actually do this. Somebody has an idea for how to recommend YouTube videos that gets put into a very complicated program, which implements the idea. Now flowcharts we'll cover in a future video, but let's focus on the three most code related representations in paper two. Program code relates to the language you've been taught, like Python or something similar to Python. OCR exam reference language is a made up programming language quite similar to Python, which OCR chose to use so they weren't forcing people to learn Python. It's meant to be used by anyone studying any language, but it has got a set of rules, which we'll talk about in future videos. Pseudocode out of the three is the most sort of enigmatic and confusing. The word pseudo means fake, and pseudocode is fake code that uses the same conventions that most programming languages would use. There are no rules for pseudocode. My pseudocode might look different to your pseudocode. The aim of it is to sort of simplify some of the oddities you might see in a programming language and communicate just the key concepts which every programmer is familiar with. So let's say my problem is I need to find the average of five numbers. I might decide to do the mean average. And if I was to code this in Python, it might look similar to this. I might use a for loop. I might decide to ask for user five times to enter a number. I add it to the total and then I divide the total by five. That is my algorithm and how I implemented it in Python. OCR ERL looks very similar to Python, but with a few tweaks to the syntax. This is how it would look if I converted my Python code into ERL representation. Now, if you know about ERL quite well at this point, if I hadn't shown you that, you would have been able to potentially convert this Python code into the same ERL I've done here. However, you won't be able to convert this into my pseudocode because you don't know what's going on in my head. You won't know exactly how I want to do this fake code. Here is one potential way to do it. You can see that I've kept lots of the conventions the same. I'm using variables still, I'm using a loop still. I'm simplifying it quite a lot to be just easier to understand. But any programmer should be able to see this code and roughly know what's going on. That's one go at pseudocode. Equally, I might have decided to do it a bit differently. This time around, I've used arrows for variables. I've used an actual for loop this time. Um, but it's a fake code. Hopefully still you can understand it. And just to give you a third example, I might make it super written English. It still looks a bit like code. I'm using more English words to again, hopefully make it clear what I'm doing. I could hopefully show this code to a Java programmer or a C++ programmer or a Python programmer, and all of them should be able to understand what it's trying to communicate because it still vaguely looks like program code. And let's not forget that there are loads of different languages. I just listed a couple there. This is the same algorithm represented in Java. 
It looks a bit nastier, especially if you're used to Python, but a Java program would understand this. But if you don't know Java, a lot of this stuff here is confusing. That's why we might rely on pseudocode instead of for slightly more complicated, strict program code. But the whole point of all of this is that all of the different examples I've shown you represent the same underlying algorithm. That doesn't change. The set of instructions is the same. The order is the same, just shown in different ways.